I'm going to show you how a schedule can be automatically adjusted when vacation is entered. So I'm going to run this schedule. It's just a basic schedule. And it's going to ask me how many employees, and they have 10 employees. And so I say, OK. And the schedule just um, fills right in. They have three shifts. They have uh, morning, afternoon, and night. And you can see the totals here. They need to have two people working on each shift. Now, so let's clear this. And let's say um, employee four wanted vacation for the first week. Now, this is the ideal situation when you have a casual employee to fill in for your vacation that's happening. But if that's not true, you would have a row where you could see the shifts that needed to be filled in by other people so that you would be able to pick and choose who could work extra time to make up the shifts. So let's put in um, a vacation for this guy for um, a week or so. And so I'm going to go to here, let's say. And then we're going to run schedule again. And once more, we have 10 employees. And so you can see that for this, this guy taking this week off, the only shift that he's missing is this one right here. And it's down. It's either assigned to your casual employee, or you know that you're going to have to, if you don't have a casual employee, you're going to have to adjust your schedule so that these days are covered by somebody else. So let's show you that what the code looks like. So um, I do R as an integer, Z as an integer, Y as an integer. And I, then I say the message box, uh, please enter how many you'd like to schedule. And the quantity that they enter is uh, Z plus qu quantity entry plus four. And that is just to allow for the four, the four rows that's before we start our actual schedule. Now, Y equals Z plus one. So we're looking, Y is the row below the actual schedule of people, or it could possibly be your casual employee. Now, for, and it goes for um, R, for row equals five to Z, which is the one you, once you've indicated with the quantity entered there. And now um, it tests, it tests that the first, uh, the first cell is empty. Now this is, this is pretty straightforward. It's saying if this isn't empty, so if there's something in there, which is vacation normally, then, then the, you would go to the worksheet uh, cells Y, which is the row below the last, uh, the last scheduled employee, and then you would put in that value. If not, then you would put your value in the row it's supposed to be in for the scheduled employee. Now that's pretty straightforward. The one that is more difficult is if you have a range. So unless you want to do it for every cell in, in, the, in the range, you, I worked this one out. And if worksheet count A, so it's looking for cells that have anything in them. Hopefully it would be the V for vacation. And the range is active cell um, zero, uh, offset 1 and offset 2. If it equals 0, if there's nothing in there, then the, you go to the normal, um, the normal person's uh, schedule, and if there is something in there, then the cells, and you go to the Y, which is your shifts plus one, so your extra extra line after the shifts, and then the values are put in. Now this is repeated for um, every every shift in the cycle here. Then when you run it, it either it either will put the the schedule with for the right person or we'll put it in the extra line. So let's go back to this shift here. And let's clear this. One more time, let's put in vacation. And then we run the schedule. And we say 10 again. We say OK. And there you see for this for this guy, then he's he's um, he's given up both of these shifts. Now you could, uh, without affecting the code, you could give these uh, the extra two days back to this guy by just deleting these, and then putting uh, the A's here.
it would be however you would like to do it. So that is how you automatically adjust a schedule for vacation. Please subscribe.